Hello and good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Focus on the Family this week. Uh, we are today, uh, we're going to talk about another topic in the same series of uh, myself and my spouse um, and focusing today on something that's interesting uh, for our family as a whole. And, and it starts from the top, obviously, with the parents, but um, it is really the focus of the family uh, uh, is the main topic of, of today. Um, and what I want to start with is first looking at uh, some of the aspects, uh, important aspects of our day-to-day -day life as a family. And these are very, very important and uh, 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 crucial for our, our life uh, as a family. These include uh, your health, your wealth, your education for, for yourself and your kids, the house, uh, future and retirement, all your supplies, food, uh, um, uh, kind of uh, clothes, water, uh, et cetera, et cetera, like pleasure, uh, going on vacations, et cetera. All these things are very, very important aspects of life and we have to uh, take care of those, obviously. Um, and our normal life, we do our best. We try our best to balance uh, everything uh, and, and we're, we're, uh, we all try to do a great job at it and, 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 uh, and focus on that. And I just want to emphasize first before I uh, move forward, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, there's aspects in life, there's responsibilities in life. So there is no judgment on the fact that we are busy and we are uh, going around trying to balance everything and trying to make uh, the best out of everything. So as we move forward in this, uh, in this talk today, I just want to make sure that uh, we all have an appreciation for how busy life is and how important a lot of these aspects are in our life. What we do want to offer is a perspective. And uh, let's look at what the Bible has to say on some of these aspects that uh, are, are very important to, in our life. So let's take supply, for instance, and in the book of Matthew uh, 6, verse 33 to 34, uh, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So from a supply perspective, the Bible is saying we should not worry about that. What about wealth? Um, so here it says, do not uh, lay up uh, for yourselves treasures on earth. For where your treasures, your treasure is, uh, there your heart will be also. And that's in the book of Matthew. And I want to pause here for a second because treasure doesn't necessarily mean money uh, uh, all the time. Because if you look at that last uh, phrase is for where your treasure is there your heart will be also or that sentence it, it's really a matter of what is occupying your heart it doesn't have to be treasures in terms of money you could be occupied by how people uh, how likable are you uh, uh, from the people around you you could be occupied by uh, gathering a wealth of information that might be something that's taken over your heart uh, you might be occupied by uh, secure, securing yourself and always driven by the fear of the unknown and fear of what's going to happen and so on and so forth. You might be driven by trying to be a, a perfect person all the time, which, which um, affects you and the people around you as well. So there are so many ways to look at treasures. And really the key here is what is taking over your heart. And... Uh, the other aspects of, uh, of wealth as well in, in the book of Mark says, sell whatever you have. And that's what Jesus says. Sell whatever you have. You will have treasure in heaven. Take up the cross and follow me. So it's not just that you don't worry about it. Jesus says, sell it. And we'll talk a bit more about what that really means uh, in terms of selling everything. Uh, education, uh, and, and Jesus so many times mentioned that we should become as children in order to receive the kingdom of heaven. It's like going backwards um, with all the education that we have. 
we have to actually grow in wisdom and 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 also in uh, uh, humility, simplicity, uh, just like children. What about future and retirement? Jesus said, "All these things shall be added to you if you ask first for, the, or if you seek first the kingdom of heaven." Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. And in the book of Mark, he mentions, if you trust in the riches, if we trust our future in the riches, uh, then it's hard for us to enter the kingdom of heaven. So with all these aspects, are we just not to worry about any of these aspects? Just not to look at these things at all? What does the Bible say to us further from there? And this was uh, a big one for me, at least when when I was preparing for this. It's also, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel shall receive a hundredfold now in this time and, and, and also in the age to come eternal life. So we are ought to leave everything that we have are we how should we try like understand that and how should we capture that in terms of not worrying about all these aspects that are very important in our life and also when god says letting go or leaving our wife and children let's say if we're focusing on family and our parents and our brothers and sisters what does that really mean are we supposed to really leave all of these things and I believe the, the important aspect here is to understand what leave means. What really, really means is over depend. So do not over depend, do not be attached, do not be obsessed, do not be consumed by, or basically it's a matter of the heart. Do not let these aspects take over your heart. That does not mean that we don't love uh, our, our, uh, our family, our wife and children. Does not mean we don't care about them. We don't nurture, we don't serve, or we even don't care about the different aspects in life, as we said, like wealth and et cetera. It really does not, um, does not mean that, but there is a fundamental uh, discernment that has to, this has to happen because it really is back to the matter of the heart what is taking over my heart and what is taking over my uh, uh, my life in that aspect and the good thing in, with in in the verse that we just um uh saw i'm going to go back to that quickly is we like god does promise out of his grace is that there's a hundredfold uh, uh for you to be given and the example in job um in in the bible where the story went where we had uh, 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 ten, 10 children, and then he had um, uh, more, which I think was, I think ad added up to uh, double at the end he uh, here in an internal life. Uh, again, so, so by God's grace, when we disconnect from these aspects and we connect to the love of God, God gives us those aspects in life as well as an eternal life. So it's really what the Bible is trying to say is what is the focus of your heart? What is taking over your heart and your, and your focus that way? So Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And in the book of Matthew, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Also, we mentioned this before. So it's really around what is occupying your heart all, or the most important thing that's occupying your heart. Now, does that mean that I ignore everything else? Completely not. And there's gonna be verses that we show also later that shows that God is saying, serve each other, have commitment to your wife and, and, and the wife has commitment to your husband. So what God really is saying is that don't obsess, don't attach too much to things that are uh, worldly or, or not lasting for a long time. 
focus your heart and, and let your heart be consumed by, by God. And I think one important um, uh, thing to also note is God wants our heart at the end, as we, as we just said. So what is your heart really after? So even when I say, okay, I'm going to be closer to God and whatnot, we have to be careful that we're not doing so, so that we're looking for that hundredfold in this time. Um, it really is a true relationship and 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 uh, into loving God and who for who He is, uh, and not necessarily for what He's going to give me in return. God's grace is is able to fill our life with everything that we need, um, but it. It, it shouldn't be kind of the focus for us is to get those because that really means our heart is not really after loving God and, and filling our heart with God, but it's more uh, we're after these worldly, uh, worldly things. Um, and, and I'm going to pause here. We're going to talk about it a little bit uh, further down, but this is very hard and we want to acknowledge, like we all want to acknowledge that. And again, back to the point earlier, there's no judgment into us doing our best in our in our life, but there is an acknowledgement that we have to discern where our heart truly is, because with that comes a lot of also very uh, helpful and useful benefits for us um, um, in our life, and we'll talk about that more. Um, so, what should be really the focus of uh, of the family? Back to our very very first question: What is the focus of the family? And in, in the book of Galatians, it says, the work of the flesh is, is evident. If you focus on earthly and, 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 and bodily uh, aspects, you're, you're looking at potentially falling into, potentially falling into adultery, fornication, uncleanness, um, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, uh, jealousy, outbursts of wrath and anger, selfish ambitions, all of these aspects, if we focus just and we let our heart get consumed fully by the treasures, and again, treasures is not necessarily money, but anything that consumes our heart in an obsessive manner, um, these aspects are, are aspects of the flesh. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So... With that shift in focus, with that shift in focus, we become a family that's focused on th these values. And it's not, doesn't mean that we don't take care of the others, the other aspects in life uh, in this world um, that we live in, but our focus, our obsession, our, cons our heart is consumed by uh, these fruits of the spirit. And what happens when we have that shift uh, uh, and we focus our heart to God. There's commitment. Um, if we follow the, the word of, uh, of Christ is, therefore what God has joined together, let not man, man separate. He said he made them male and female from the start. So again, it's God is not saying leave your, your wife or your mother and father, like physically, but it's more, don't let that be the focus of your of your life and, uh, and of your heart. Um, but use that to honor God through serving others and, and loving others. Um, and that's a, here's a verse as well about serving each other in the book of Mark. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be a shall be slave to all. It's not just last, it says slave. Um, which really you put yourself down for others and you can only do that if, if your heart is consumed by, by God, because that's how you're going to fill your own bucket to be able to do that. Um, but imagine the result, like imagine if your spouse was uh, being uh, sacrificing for, for you and, and for the family, you will feel um, a lot of love from that. And, same thing with yourself when you do truly connect with God and become a servant to your spouse and your family, you do feel um, uh, supported, you do feel the love of God, and it's a reciprocal thing. So you fill 
your family with with love and in return that's going to fill your heart as well um again these are these are things that will will we should see and it and it and it should enhance our our relationships and our and our love and our eternal family uh here on earth uh kindness and forgiveness be kind to one another forgiving one another all of these things we do say a lot in 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 marriage counseling and in relationships but they are they are already written for us it's not and it's nothing new um it is something that only can be done by uh, uh focusing our hearts uh, with god so how can we become uh, uh an eternal family and these are just a few ideas again this is not a full list of uh, or detailed uh steps of how to do that um you should always consult also with your father's confession but um how can we uh, become here's a few ideas dedicate time and energy whenever you need to do something in life you always look at dedicating time and energy to do it uh, if you don't have the time to do it if you don't put the effort you, you're not going to bear the fruits so um spend time and energy focusing on the on god and his kingdom focusing with the family on the love peace joy kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness uh self-control and patience and so these are the fruits of the spirit focus with your family on that how maybe through a talk every now and then with your spouse and with your kids maybe reflecting on yourself how am i doing uh in those and um and and looking at how uh, how to improve another idea is let go of any attachments look deep inside are you over depending on something and um uh are you are you too attached or obsessed by something either again uh information uh love of others um are you obsessed by uh uh, being perfect so on and so forth these are all different examples are you obsessed by uh uh not uh, or or obsessed by fear obsessed by just fear of the unknown all the time and and that's that's over uh taking your your heart um another is and a very important one is again it's back to what's what's controlling your heart what's uh, what's taking over your heart so your personal relationship with god uh, your own time with god ask for his for his help study his word have faith in him and um and and, and trust him that he will uh, take care of everything but more importantly just make sure that you are in a relationship with uh, with god um I just want to again i mentioned it before uh this is the same verse that we looked at before where we said uh leaving the brother mother uh wife children etc for my sake and the gospel and at the end it says with persecution and i i want to pause there because as i mentioned this is all great but then in our life it's very hard it's very hard for us to, to do but we we have a choice to make and we have to have faith in in god and we always say and adli always reminds us of that is you have two choices you either try again or give up there's no other choice you either give up on uh, you know i i don't i don't really i think i'm 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 doing fine um and i'll keep doing what i'm doing and you know what you might be doing fine for sure here um the the idea here is that god if you look at an eternal life you look at it in a past present and future tense and you look at it beyond your lifetime what happened in this world in the past we can't ignore and all the the, the facts and 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 stories and how life became god is god is alive god is here and we have to make a decision on how we're going to have a relationship with god is it going to be passive and i'm going to get just ask whenever i need something or is it going to be truly that i let god um, uh, let in my heart and let him consume my heart and everything else is going to be taken care of 
our impact as a family when we focus on the eternal God is going to be eternal life. Um, not just for us, but, but just for God's kingdom as well. It's going to have impacts beyond uh, our, our own life uh, here. Um, but again, just, just wanting to appreciate that we are, as human beings, it's hard to change. We have to make a choice every day to try, and that is what we can do. And the good thing is God knows this. Jesus knows this when his disciples said, who then can be saved? He said, with men, it is po impossible. You, we cannot do it on our own. And that's just exactly the recognition that, that, it, that we were just mentioning. We feel it's hard because we're doing it on our own as well. But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. We do need to lean on him. And, and, and we often um, do not let go. We, we need to reach out and we need to have faith that he will carry us. Uh, and he will make it happen because it's very hard for us to do it on our own. Um, and really, he is um, uh, the fountain of, of life. And, and he said, the water that I shall give, and this is metaphorically speaking, will uh, become a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life that's in a, in a soul. So... Our Lord God can um, fill us up to a point where we can do all of these commandments of, of, of loving and, uh, and, and, and having an ever, everlasting eternal life with him and for our family as well. Um, he is able to, to draw and, and to provide endlessly from that well uh, into our life. It's a choice we have to make. It does feel hard. It takes faith in God that he will take care of us. And we just have to every day try to make that choice uh, to try again. Uh, don't give up and also be compassionate that we are human beings. God himself, Jesus, recognizes that with man it's impossible. He recognizes it's hard. Uh, we just have to uh, use him, as he said, with God things are, uh, are all possible. So we have to use him and his power and not only depend on ourselves. Um, the glory be to God uh, forever. Amen. Thank you again. And please uh, keep sending us your thoughts uh, on at family at orthodoxy.ca. And, um, and uh, we look forward to continuing uh, this service with, with your help and ideas and thoughts and feedback, please, on, uh, on all that we uh, provide. Thank you very much. God bless. And we'll see you next week.